I think the one thing that I really love about Heartstopper is that because it's got such a big fan base and loads of people love it, it, it comes from a place of love from them. Hello, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm good, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing, thank you. I mean, there's hardly need for much of an introduction because we know him, the whole world fell in love with him in Heartstopper season two, and now he's back again, stealing hearts on stage and in his own life. We're gonna get into it. Oh. It's Richard. <laughs> hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> I saw you in Babies last night, and boy, you were taking over that stage. You were making that stage your own and I was obsessed. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, it's such a fun show to be a part of, I think. I've always wanted to do like a new musical, a new role that you can kind of make your own because no one's ever really seen it before. So much fun and everyone gets along really well, but yeah, it's such a fun show to be a part of. It was incredible. You all did such a good oh. job. I felt like I was back in school again and got my own work, <laughs> you know what I mean? For people that don't know yet, can you give me a brief rundown of Babies and why you wanted to get involved? Yeah, uh, so Babies, it, it sounds quite like a weird concept. It's basically about um, a group of Year 11 students who look after fake baby robot simulators as like a, um, a sex ed project. And while they're looking after these babies, they go through their own journeys regarding sexuality, gender, family troubles, friendship troubles, real representation of different communities. Everyone else's own troubles, anyone else's own journeys as a human becomes the primary uh, plot line, which I thought was just a really clever way to I write a musical in an entertaining way. And you play Toby, who's a gay character. Can you talk me through his coming of age journey that we see him go through in the show and how that impacts him and his assignment partner as well? He feels like the only gay in the school, like the only gay in the village type vibe. He doesn't want to get hurt. He's got his two best friends and that's all he needs. The typical, you know, football boy comes over to speak with him when they have to share a baby because there's none left. Through the baby, they kind of see eye to eye and like, just because they're so different they can get along and they go on this really lovely journey which is really fun to play as well. When you read the script do you relate to anything about Toby's like life and what he goes through? Is there anything that you really resonated with? Yeah I think especially when um, I got older I think I was more comfortable with who I was a bit later on like Toby 16. I was more comfortable when I was 18 maybe 20. I wish I was that open that free and that um, confident of who I was. Um, so it's quite cathartic to play him in some ways, thinking about 16 year old me being like, I wish I was like this. There isn't exactly an overflowing selection of gay or queer character roles available out there. I really, really wanna know, what was your favorite part about having the opportunity to portray that representation that's obviously needed? Yeah, I think a lot of the stuff I do and this, a lot of the stuff that I want to do, I think it is representing things that, or communities and people that I feel like I wish I had when I was younger and I know that other people wish they have. So obviously being a part of Heartstopper was a massive thing to represent um, the queer community as well as going and Big Brother representing the neurodiverse uh, community. Um, and then obviously getting this role to play another queer role, which I'm very happy with. And I, I, I've always wanted to play queer roles and represent and have that positive representation within the community. Once you feel seen, if it's in a book or a TV show or um, in theatre, it will just make your journey of accepting yourself, understanding yourself so much um, easier and more positive, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And you've said before as well that theatre was your first love. So would you like <laughs> to go to Broadway eventually, like your co-stars Kit Connor and J-Lock? Yeah, I mean, I would not turn Broadway down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they came knocking, I would be going. Going into theatre, it's you kind of have to get your foot in a different type of door type thing. I put myself out there in a show. I feel like hopefully more opportunities and possibilities will arise. But yeah, if if Broadway came knocking, I'd be flying over there. <laughs> Moving away from theatre a little bit, not only did you go on Big Brother, but you got really far in it. Did you expect to get that far? And how was the experience? Obviously, everyone wants to win at the end of the day. You wanna you wanna get to like far as way uh, far to the end as possible. Because I I never really had a stress in there because I was never really up, I was never up for nomination um, <laughs> until I had to be, and then I left. It didn't feel real that I was actually going in, and then I was there, and I was like, oh. Let's see how far I get now then. <laughs> I have to say as well, congrats on the engagement. Did you know Thank that you. it was coming or were you in complete shock? Part of me thought it was coming because I got out of the house and Scott was like, oh yeah, we're going to Italy next week. And I was like, what? Because so, like, my, 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 my schedule was so busy and I was like, I've literally just got out of the house, I've got those things to do. Um, and then my agent was like, yeah, you can go. And I was like, this is really weird. Like, <laughs> why, why is everyone telling me to go to Italy? And then, yeah, so part of me had a little 
a little inkling um, that something was going to happen. But yeah, it was a really lovely moment. And how does it feel to know that you've met your person as well? He just gets me and he gets along with all my friends as well, which is nice. It feels very, very good, very happy. I'm very grateful. <laughs> You've previously spoken about your difficulties with dating and finding love whilst having autism as well. Can I ask how that impacted you trying to navigate dating? I think it was just a communication was quite difficult sometimes. I think sometimes obviously when I'm burnt out and I need my space, I think they wouldn't get it. And I think that's where a lot of um, relationships, especially with neurodiverse people and autistic people, or people with ADHD, I think you feel upset and just exhausted to trying to explain yourself all the time. And then you're explaining yourself more than actually enjoying this person's company. Scott gets it, so Scott gets me, which is really lovely. When you find your person and in a relationship, you don't want to explain yourself. You just want them just to kind of get it. But yeah, that's that's my experience. <laughs> and I can't let you go without asking about <clears throat> Heartstopper, of course. Is there anything at all that you can say about the new season? I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to say a minute. I'm not, I'm not even sure what I'm allowed to say. They don't really tell us much. <laughs> it's coming on October the 3rd, I think. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. How has the show changed your life as well, being on Heartstopper? Because it's really, really transformed so many people. So obviously I, I was going into season two and I saw season one become this amazing thing. I think the one thing that I really love about Heartstopper is that because it's got such a big fan base and loads of people love it, it, it comes from a place of love from them and everyone in the cast loves the show. Um, so it just feels like we that's the one thing we all have in common, that we all have this love for this amazing show that we created and they've watched. And yeah, I feel like it helped me with my confidence a lot as well, because if I had that when I was even 15, that would help me a lot. And even when I was 19, it helped me a lot. So yeah, it's just an incredible show to be a part of and I'm very grateful for. When the show first came out and you saw it was getting big, did you expect that you were going to be in season two or...? So I was actually on off season one, I was um, an extra and I had like one line at the end of episode eight. Because then I looked online, it was like, oh, Hearts of a Season 2 is confirmed, it starts filming in September. And I was like, oh, okay, it's like, still waiting for my phone call. <laughs> like delu delusional me was like, yeah, still waiting for my phone call. I was doing like um, an extra role on Saltburn. I was in like the mini bus that they take you to the set in. And then someone behind me was like, oh yeah, my friend just got cast as um, Sahar in Hearts of a Season 2. And I went, cast isn't it i was just like oh god it's cast how dare they two days later i got my audition through to play james and then i did my audition and then got the role so yeah it always felt like i was meant to be there but yeah delusional me manifested it, i think <laughs> oh my gosh wow so they really jump scared you then with that one <laughs> yeah it was like september filming i was like oh yeah they didn't want me i didn't even know there was a character for me i was just really thought there's, there's got to be something for me. There's got to be something. That's so incredible to hear because I had no idea about that. Thank you so much. And yeah, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much. I'll be speaking to you.